streaming from the woke salary man. I had zero dollars in the bank. I saved my first hundred K when I was 28. Why the f do I need to invest? Why can't I just work my job and that be enough? Wow. I only take cab once a day. Where did all my money go? This is your daily catch up. We're talking money today. And nice. so we have a very awake guest here with us to share his experience and expertise. Please join me in welcoming Ray Ming from the Woke Salary Man. Yay. 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 It's been a while. It's been a while. Yes. Yes. You might have seen Ray Ming on some of our other videos, including an old Zoom interview way back when. It was so fun. He was going to travel and then he, he was struck oh, yeah, with COVID yeah, and we yeah, decided remember. to interview him in his room. Wait, he, <laughs> he was like, never on the set? No, no, no. 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 First time, first time. He was uh, talking like a McDonald's operator. Then we couldn't fun. connect, but we just pretend we can hear him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what did you just tell me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so today he's here with us because we are going to be talking about basic financial planning in Singapore. Mm. And I think he is quite the face of saving money and investing and getting fire, what, financially independent, retire early. Okay, like yes, nowadays yeah. we try to do, do just FI because <laughs> RE's got some stigma. People say it's not productive because if you retire early, you know, you're not generating value for the economy and stuff. So now oh. we just try to say, yeah, for FI. Uh, Eventually yeah, but it's quite people sketchy. find problems. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, yeah. just fee. Uh, just okay. Fee. Just fee is fine. So I actually found quite an interesting article. It's a table showing how much savings you should have by age range. I just passed 25, so I'm about to turn 26, right? But by wow. 25, the amount that you should have saved if you earn a median wage, and assuming that you started working at 23, right, is 25,000. Okay. Which actually sounds pretty manageable. Doable. So where were you when you were 25 years old and did you already hit this $25,000 range? Is the question for me or? It is. For oh, okay, okay. Cause, cause I can't doubt the eye line. Ah, like, who are you looking oh, at? Sorry, right? okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I um, think it was for all of us, yeah. but like we were referring to you cause you are the financial expert. Oh, okay. I think like when I was 25 years old, I had zero dollars in the bank. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Actually that year, like I just came back from uh, Australia from studying. Mm. Right. I mean, by the way, not my, not my parents pay for it. I was on a scholarship. Mm. It, yeah, I just I just want to disclaim because nowadays these things are sensitive. Then you will say study from Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will color like the whole conversation. I just want to declare upfront. So don't take it that I'm well to do. I'm just really smart. I mean, I also don't want to say that also. And anyways, <laughs> I think I had like zero dollars at, at the beginning of the year. Wow. Then after that, like somewhere due middle of the year, I actually saved up, I think like two, three K. Mm -hmm. okay. Then my mom had a stroke. Then I went to like sp stress, sorry, stress spending mode for like, uh, I think a few months. So and I ended the end of the year, maybe like, maybe like maybe 1,000, 2,000 only. So I only started my financial journey like the next year when, when I decided to like do what I had to do. What do you mean by stress spending? Like, you know, uh, my mom was like water at NUH. Then every day, like if I take the bus there, it's like very sien. Or like, mm. then I will like take cab there. Or I will like uh. eat food because like I'm bored while waiting for like the doctor to give like a, you know, like the result and stuff. This seems like fair enough, like, especially yes, yeah. with what you're going through. <laughs> like. Well, so, okay, maybe I shouldn't have called it stress spending. Yeah, it yeah. was appropriate spending for, <laughs> for the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about the rest of you all? Uh, I think I was similar because I also had come back from uh, Australia. Whoa. Not on scholarship, my parents paid for me. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> 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 you saying this after his whole disclaimer is not a good look. Uh, I remember I was a trainee. So it's like intern, but you already have a degree. So they call it trainee so they can pay you a little bit less. Uh, and it was quite <laughs> sad. La. I think I was earning like 1.5 at that time for like mm. six months. So really everything that you earn just nice it's out. the spend, right? Yeah. Need no answer. Wow. At 25. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so I made a, a mistake, right? I don't know how to count CPF last time. So once I got my first oh. full-time job, right? Then let's say I earn like, like 3.5K, right? I thought I can spend finish 3.5K. Wait, but how you spend 3.5K? If you don't have 3.5K. Yeah, if you don't want. Oh yeah, existing money. I have money. some money also. Ah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. Then when the salary comes, you know, but not that much. Okay. <laughs> but why the amount, the total amount keep dropping every Monday, I don't understand. <laughs> then I realized they actually got 20% missing. It's math. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I keep dropping every month. But no savings, no savings. Got yeah. it. But so yeah. for you, you mentioned that the next year you actually started looking into financial independence kind of things, right? What yeah. was that turning point for you? Yeah, so actually it's my mom having the stroke. That moment really like woke me up to the realities of adulthood. <laughs> and then like, I also thought like, wow, I don't want to be a burden to my family if, if, I, can, if I can help it. So I just like focus on being financially independent as soon as possible. So I did like everything that it took, like at least for like the first, maybe like three to five years of my career. 
So what do those first few steps look mm. like? In the beginning, I tried to cut expenses as much as possible. Mm. I'm not sure whether now have. Now, now, last time like they had this incentive for you to take like the, the early train into the city. And oh. you, can, you can save 50 cents or something like that. Yes, wow. now still have. Ah, now, now it's have. before a certain time, if you take bus like an X amount of distance already, right? then you switch to MRT or LRT, ah, then it's ah. free. Yeah, so, okay. so I would cook my own lunch, mm. but I didn't know how to cook much, la, so I just boil <laughs> chicken breast and uh, spinach. Mm. So and you I also lose weight in the process. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. And then at some point, like, I discovered like cycling, so I started cycling to work. So that was where the cycling passion started. La. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you yeah, stayed yeah. Jurong that, at that time, and then where was your workplace? Wow, I had a couple of workplaces. I think there was one in Orchard. There was one in Mountbatten. Mm. Okay, so you 4 a.m. start cycling? La. No lah. Uh, no. I think <laughs> in the beginning, you cycle with rest low. You'll be like the regular speed at East Coast Park. Uh. But after you get used to it, you will pick up and speed one. Mm. At that time, right, we didn't have the amount of resources that we have today to like mm. understand what fi entering your financial journey look like. So what was the resources that you used back then? Was it like books mm. or websites? Well, oh, I think got a few good sites that are still around today. I think Money Smart was around, Money Sense was around. The time YouTube on like, the time Finley on YouTube wasn't so big yet. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So I just follow all this stuff at first. Uh. So your very first step when you decided to make the change is just, let me cut back on my expenses as much as possible and, yeah. and save whatever yeah. I can. Exactly. That was the only step you took. I think that's the first step. Then of course, along the way, like at some point I, try to invest. Then after I realized like it's Hing Sui one. I mean, for me, <laughs> la, because, because I wasn't investing ba based on fundamentals. I was okay. just listening to like stock tips. Mm. Yeah, and then whatever people say like- uh, Sounds good that you, you buy. buy then I just buy. Yeah. So I think Dan did mention that there's so much information now online, right? And I think there's the case where it is the negative effect right. where there's just so many people saying so many different things and then I don't know who to follow. No, like what is actually the thing I need to be doing in order to fix my financial health? You know mm. what I mean? So Mani says whom we are working with for this episode, so, right, did share this basic financial planning guide with me. Okay. And so essentially this is something that MAS has worked together with various financial industry associations to develop. And it's for people across age groups and life stages. So be it you are new to the workforce, starting a family, or you're supporting aged parents or planning for retirement. Wow. So you can go to their website, which we will also link down below later on, and you'll be able to see what are the basic things that you need to hit, right? In order to address your saving needs, insurance needs, and investment needs. The three main things that they did bring up, which I think we can delve a bit more into later, also mm. is setting aside at least three to six months worth of expenses as emergency funds. Yikes. Secondly, being able to invest at least 10% of your take home income mm. for retirement and other financial goals. Yep. And third, to spend at most 15% of your income on insurance protection for death and total permanent disability as well as critical illness. I think for a lot of people there that are going to watch this episode, right, I think mm. one of the things that they want to do is really understand the basics of financial literacy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, right, is what exactly does being financially literate uh, encompass? Okay, I have the definition here. Ah. So it is equipping people with financial knowledge and skills to help them make informed and sound decisions about finances. Wow. So long but precise definition. Mm. Okay. Step one is you build your emergency fund already. Then once yep. you have that, then you can build your funds that you then use to invest. Mm. What I didn't realize that I was doing was this thing that they call the envelope system budget. I mean, people know that I didn't have a credit card until wow. last year, I think. Congrats. Yeah. This is something that I just like, I didn't think that, oh, this is a, a budgeting method. I want to use it. I just happened to like it. Like every single time I go to the ATM, right? Then I know, oh shit, I spent another $50 and it's mm. only been two days. After I track what I'm spending on, then I can kind of budget, okay, I average around $300 for food this month. Right. Mm. And then from now on, at the start of every month, right? I draw $300 cash and I put inside the envelope. So I have these different envelopes, right? That I'm using for different things that I need in my life. Right, mm. right. Yeah. This is something I learned online. I don't know whether it's an actual fact, but there was an expert that shared that when you actually keep track of what you are spending, this conscious nurse decreases the amount that you spend by 20 to 25%. Wow. Because wow. a lot of what we spend is emotional spending. So I think just now the term that Raymond used was stress spending, right? Yeah. But essentially mm. is if I feel sad now, I want to eat something, I go eat something. If I feel lazy now, then okay, I just take a cap law. Yeah. And this money that you are just spending emotionally to make yourself happy in that moment. Ma. Yeah. Knowledge and, is power. Yes. And of course, like, I think work on your earning power. Because nowadays like financial literacy, everyone thinks it's like buying that one stock investing then you 10 exit or 5 exit, right? Mm, mm. But actually so much of financial literacy is earning good money and then 
treating it responsibly. Find ways to ensure that your salary is growing at a good rate. Mm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. For our page, we always, else, we always tell people to focus on earning power first. But when I'm so young, then you know, I'm fresh out of school, like for the both of them, they yeah. were also interns at 25, right? Yeah. Then how do I increase my earning power as quickly as possible? So for me, like when I, back then when I graduated in 2013, right? Oh. I was in, I was in the, hey, don't say like that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Sweet call uncle. <laughs> oh. 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 Okay, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see in two years, I will, I will text you, hey, young girl. Uh, <laughs> okay, so for me, media graduates, right? I think they either only did like writing, photography, they specialize in, in mm. like just one field alone. Mm. So when, when I graduated, I I learned how to like copyright. I learned how to do video editing, like transcribing. When I apply for a job, I tell them like the whole bunch of stuff I can do. I can not just be a copywriter. I can also be a like part-time video editor. Mm -hmm. So not many people might know this, but Ray moved out of his parents' house quite early on in mm. his maybe mid twenties already. Mm. And how did you budget for that? Oh, wow. wow. Some stupid rule, I not stupid lah. It was a not bad rule. I created in my head, <laughs> right? I told myself like I will spend no more than 1% of my net worth on rent. So if I didn't reach that net worth to rent a house, right, then I would not rent a house. So my first place was $700 a month. I, I rented like a, a common room. So once I had 70K, I just move up. So the logic was that, you know, I can go for more than, uh, you know, one year yeah. without reducing my net worth too much. Right. Yeah. Like one year I lose 12% of my net worth to have like some headspace, so why not? Okay. Wow, but it's so interesting that like you manage to save that much while also having a rent expense on top of that. It's like you want to live on hard mode, live life in hard mode. No, so I think it's back back to the beginning. I think a lot of it is earning a, a good income. Yeah. So I had to do some extreme things and it's mm. not something that we expect. Everyone to do it. Just saying Wait, like, like what? You better say you know, <laughs> yeah. we have a yeah. Yeah. Just saying like when I pick job, I'll pursue like the most high I'll prioritize like the highest paying ones. Okay. I will okay. ask my boss then for a pay every every year. Then if don't have, I will go look for other opportunities. Yeah, yeah I'll like okay. say, Hey I got this offer, you wanna match it? You don't <laughs> match it? Okay, I'm going. I don't know what I can say, but I mean since eight years ago, I can just say I was earning like I think close to eight K when I was twenty eight years old. Wow. Yeah. And that allowed me to kind of do the things I wanted to do. Okay. Sorry, this is like you had like a full-time job or you were doing freelance? Full-time job. Uh, full job. For somebody who's like starting out on this journey, mm. what would you say are like the various like key milestones that they should be looking at, right? So like at the beginning, like sure you have that saving of six months of expenses thing, but financially, should they actually really be focusing on like the first milestone being like, I should have an active income of like, X amount first. I think using active income is like, it's a bit tenuous because everyone's active income will be different depending mm. on the industry. The thing I don't like about salary guys is like, they tell you like how much you should be earning by a certain age, but sometimes yeah. it's just not realistic, right? If you work in a uh, industry with low demand, the fact is, you know, you might just be earning less than the than the median person in Singapore. Yeah, okay. okay. No matter how long it takes. There's so many factors. Yeah. I will not uh, put the pressure on the average person to earn like a certain amount by a certain age. Although if you want to pursue, specialized goals like fire, okay. right? If you want to retire early, then you got to do some like, like exceptional things. Like. Yeah. Okay. Exceptional, not in a good way or bad way, just in a neutral way. <laughs> <laughs> you are super woke, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> I try, I try. I, the curve. I try my best. So I was talking to, to, to one of our colleagues, right? And he, he openly admits that he has zero financial literacy. Mm. And he's 33. Yeah. Mm. Is it, and is it he's caught. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> it's Jared, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the core questions he has right, is, why the f do I need to invest? Mm. Mm. So investing, if you think about it, is a, is a kind of innovation. It allows people to actually stop working. Because before investing, right, you just work until you die, because the only income is labor. Investing mm. allows you to make money while you sleep. So you already, you still get money coming in. You make your dollar work for you, essentially. Then why is it that we don't just take all money and put it? Put it where? Wherever this investment exists. I mean like, in some, <laughs> in some ways, government try to help you do that uh -huh. via CPF. The money taken for you, yeah, stick, right? And then they invest it, you know, and I think CPF SA give you like 2.5%, mm. SA give you up to 5% for your six, first 60K, 4% uh, after that. Okay. I think wow, so, I, I think so. Expert. It's a bit difficult to, I guess graphs like, what should I be doing? How should I manage my expectations when it comes to investing? Am I growing so that I can retire early? Am I going to get rich? Mm. Like where's, where's the, what, what should the goal of investing be? I would see like investment as more of like a sidekick to your earning power, mm. right? So it's meant to assist you. It's not meant to be like 
the hero of your financial journey. Yeah. You know, like you play Dota. I don't know if people still play Dota. Let's go. Let's right. go with this energy. Like, like uh, earning power is like the hard carrier. Mm. Right. Okay. 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 Such as? Wow. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's true wallet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 50% of our viewers have just clicked. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. Just clicked. True wallet. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Then after that, like, uh, what investment is support? Right. Let's say when the true wallet goes back to base, goes yeah. to the fountain. Yeah. Then like investment will step up. Ah, yeah, you know what I mean? Shadow Shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, like if we, it. Is it so okay? if we need an alternative <laughs> analogy. Okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Batman and Robin, right? Ah, yeah. ah, yeah. Everyone knows hey. Batman. Everyone knows Robin. So the commission will never no, just call Robin on his own, but you want Robin and Batman to yeah, be together. To be around, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes around. if you don't manage Robin properly, right, he kind of yeah. messes the whole thing up. Yeah. Right? That's true. So actually, it's a decent analogy, I think. Yeah. I always watch Lego Batman. So okay. another uh, basic question from Jared, right? Yeah. Is how you know, how you know Jared as he, he put I down. asked him before. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Fair sure. Yeah. So uh, Jared, right, yeah. <laughs> was asking that, why can't I just work my job and that be enough? Like my money just goes into my bank mm. and then I just, why can't that be enough? Ah, yeah, cause of inflation lah, right? So then his follow up question, which yeah. is right here is what the f is inflation? <laughs> <laughs> He's very basic, very, very basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inflation is just the value of your money go down over time lor. Yeah, he asked why. Oh, I mean why? Because more money enters the system, so currency is devalued. But where all this money coming from? Where all this money come from? <laughs> the <laughs> central banks just... around the world print money. <laughs> I was scared we lose the audience. <laughs> It's too, too basic These are people who have survived the Dota analogy. No, I genuinely hey, think thanks, that- Thanks for hanging on. I genuinely <laughs> think that at a basic level, like for him, right? Mm. Yeah. Like he really fully doesn't grasp it because he doesn't understand the importance mm. and the whys to it. And it's frustrating for them, especially. Okay. So yeah. I understand, right? But maybe you should ask Jared, like, can he control inflation? Does it happen or not? Can he stop mm. inflation from happening? Cannot, right? Mm. So once you understand that it's unstoppable, you just need to do the next step on how to overcome it, which is- Investing, right? So, so in the in the guide that we were referring to, right, at the very early portion, there's something that says talks about how you split their money into like it's either in your savings account mm. or in like a Singapore savings bond, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. So when we when I asked Jared what is that, he don't know what is a Singapore savings bond. So can you explain to people who don't don't oh, know? What Singapore is savings bond is kind of like the government need to raise money, so it borrows money from you and then they pay you interest. Okay, so like that, yeah, so when should you use that? Or when should you put your money there? When you should use that? Probably when you cannot afford for that bucket of money, like when you mm. cannot afford to lose any of it, then you buy something like a government Singapore savings bond. Of course, there are other bonds in the world, you know, rated from AAA to all the way to I think mm. D. So some bonds are like more trustworthy than others. But in general, I think Singapore government is one of the few organizations worldwide, you know, rated triple A. Mm. So you can trust that. I'm not endorsed by Singapore government to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I think Moody's, Moody's, yeah, Moody's is the international credit rating firm. Oh, okay. Standard Poor. Okay. I think something to mention is that the barrier to, to starting investing is, it feels very daunting, especially if you're not into it, but actually it's relatively simple. If you're exploring something like the Singapore Savings Bond, it's something that you can do on your own personal bank account, which I think is, is super useful. Uh, or if you even want to get into a regular savings plan. That's something they also do on, on your banking platform. Mm. So you don't have to like start a brokerage account or anything like that. Mm. So I think like the three local banks really give like regular savings plan. Yeah. I think you can start from as low as $100. And the best part is that they take it straight away from your bank account. So you don't have to like have that barrier of like, oh, I need to yeah, remember yeah, to yeah. credit. You it just automate it. Yeah. You just take like your mind off it. If not, you always like worry. Don't think. You check the price, then you want to buy, should I buy, not buy. Then you text me that I don't reply you. <laughs> which, is <also> the, <laughs> which is also the magic of something, a term that you mentioned earlier, DCA, which is dollar cost averaging. The beauty of that is it averages over time. So it doesn't matter what price you buy it at. When it's high, you buy less of it. When it's low, you buy more of it. And it averages over time. So it actually takes the thinking out of it. Uh, and it's sound like it's theoretically sound. Yeah, actually the biggest enemy to investing well is actually con uh, lack of consistency. Oh. So it seems like logically the smart thing to do is, is to time the market. But if the, I feel like the practical thing to do, especially if you're new to investing, is just to put small amounts so that you don't uh, overthink it. Mm. Mm. Let's say your net worth is like $10,000. For you to invest the full $10,000 in the market is very daunting, right? But if you break it up to like $500, is not so scary. Mm. It's better to like start rather than just like wait for a uh, one day you invest that will never come. Do you mm. count the insurance, uh, those saving plans one, right, as investment? Because uh, every month I put, it's, it's essentially, am I not DCAing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, but I mean, insurance products tend to be like more complicated. Okay, let's say I want to invest into S&P 500 every month. Mm. S&P 500 is the collection of 500 largest uh, US companies yep. in index one. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So let, let's say like one day I'm, I have like a cash flow problem. 
I can stop investing and start again whenever I want. Okay. For insurance companies, although you can do things called like a premium holiday, take a break from it. Oh. It is often limited. Right. Yeah. I didn't even know like that. Like premium exists. holiday. I, I didn't even know that. It's called premium holiday. Uh -huh. yeah. oh. So you can like not pay for a while, yeah. but eventually they will come to you. Yeah. And then if you want to <laughs> give up the plan, you will get back less than you put in. It's mm. very painful. Like mm. the terminal amount is like way surrender less value. than the yeah. Yeah, surrender yeah, value. Surrender sorry. value. It's so it's so measly. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the first thing I would recommend, even though right. uh, a lot of investment link policies work for some people. Yeah. It's good to have insurance to protect you from like high costs if the, the worst happens. But also there's a lot of other investment policies that maybe are a little bit extra or like unnecessary. So like, would you say the bare minimum would be something like hospitalization, accident, and maybe like a life plan? Is there like a bare minimum that you yeah. feel? So I think- You're talking mm -hmm. about coverage, is it? How yeah, much? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think accident, I will buy, yeah. ISP or uh, integrated shoe plan, I'll buy. Uh, critical illness, I think actually nowadays quite high chance of getting, mm. so I'll get that also. Mm. The death insurance, right? Uh, that one really depends on whether or not you have dependence. If I can jump in on the coverage, right? The yeah. recommendation from the basic financial planning guide is actually four times your annual income for critical illness. Mm. So it's, I think it's presumably that that is the oh. amount of time that you will need for recovery. Mm. That's why they're saying for annual income. So it's essentially four mm. years. Mm. La. Okay, and okay. then for death and total permanent disability is nine times your annual income. Mm. Oh, wow, I'm severely undercovered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the recommendation. Okay. Ask the FAs go get him now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, think, I don't know why, yeah, but- You really I, just blasted. Uh, you're going to yeah. get a lot of friends message you for lunch. No, no, I, I, I love my FA, but to be fair, like he recommend me and then I was like, hey, no, cheaper, cheaper, please, cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. 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 So <laughs> I think like I'm covered for like maybe one year of like for critical oh. illness, thinking I'll recover in one year. Even like for, uh, let's say term, uh, life insurance, mm. there are things like term insurance, which is just paying uh, for- A specific period A specific period of period time. Of time. It's usually cheaper. Mm. And there's also like whole life whole insurance life. where they, mm. it's more expensive, but your insurance plans have value. For most people, I think uh, term insurance will, will do the job because sometimes when you mix term insurance plus like a savings portion, right? It can complicate the, the financial product. I think term insurance is uh, a good option. Like what Remy mentioned, if affordability is a problem. It's simple. Yeah, there is saying okay. in okay. Chinese called <coughs> Hua si tian zu, Fui yo, Fui which is yo. something like draw snake add extra yeah you draw the snake then you add like extra legs become lizard yeah become lizard right got it, got and it. then uh, sometimes when you do that it's either a complicated product you don't understand it yeah. or, or you lose money mm -hmm. so sometimes when you do like some complicated trading algorithm or something mm -hmm. then it turns out surprise it's a scam <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, that yeah. really cut deep. Oh no. Who would have thought Japan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so sometimes when we give like our financial suggestions, right? Uh, people mm -hmm. say, ah yeah, you you all don't know one lah. You all say all this basic stuff. But sometimes mm. like the most basic thing is also like the most effective things. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That was what I learned. I'm not sure whether it is the hard way. I also started off similar to you. I tried to pick whatever is more high risk, high reward. Mm. So the first thing that I ever traded, right, was leverage ETFs. Mm. And so, you know, ETF sounds safe. Then after that leverage is like, can earn more, but safe way. Mm. Then, <laughs> but anyway, the stock delays. Uh. So oh, I lost yeah. all the money that I had wow. at, at that point that I put in. And at that point, oh. I didn't save the emergency funds or so. Oh. So then I essentially restart. Lor. So many people have like the misconception that ETFs are safe. Yeah, yeah. But actually, all, all ETFs are a basket. So you have to look at the contents of the basket. In general, stuff like that, the S&P 500 is like a, the basket of 500 stocks or like STI ETF, 30 stocks in Singapore's uh, stock market. Decent bets. Yeah. But there are ETFs that have like bad or like risky, risky stuff mm, in it. Like so it shouldn't be just Pelosi. ETF safe. It depends yeah. what yeah, the yeah, ETF yeah, is yeah, of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I see people who have been investing for very long, investing for very long, then they will like, they will not know what is the ETF. Mm. They will think an ETF is like a, a company. Right. right. Yeah. So like, or like what is a fund? What is a bond? What is a stock? So mm. I think it's important to like figure all this out first. Then you can, you know, take like, then you, then you know what you're investing in. Uh. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what you're investing in, then you can just do the conventional thing. And if I remember correctly, actually, Ray Ming shared with me that for the past 10 years or so, since 2014, right, he started maintaining this Excel sheet. It's like a mega Excel sheet mm -hmm. when he tracked like his wow. net worth, uh, his goals, his progress and all this. Can you share a bit about that? Oh, sure. So like, it's not Excel sheet. You know, like Google has the free Google Sheets. Yeah. Sheets. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sheets. Yeah, yeah. Sheets. Uh, sheets. Like, sheets. Double E's, right? <laughs> so I'll put down like my expenses, sheets. big expenses, like, how much I have in my, my different brokerage accounts. 
uh, my bank accounts. And then I'll just maintain it like, I think once or twice a week in initially. Yeah. But nowadays I look at it every two weeks. The good thing is that over 10 years, I can see like the progress I made. Because okay. I can go and track changes. Oh yeah. Now scroll all the way back. Okay, okay. So So even during times like on my financial journey, I sometimes I feel like, very discouraged of first, but I didn't meet my goals yeah. uh, last time. But then I'll go look back at the past and I can see like, oh, actually I come a long yeah, way. I actually I'm come. doing not bad. Mm. And like that helps me. And also because you track expenses, it keeps you like focused and, and, and disciplined also. Are you selling this and play or not? And I give for free. Uh. Ah, I, I can send you guys the link. Okay. What, what would you say for, for well. beginners? Is the like maybe like the, the three most important like numbers to keep track of? Wow. And this is more than three. Yeah. More than three. I think it's just your net worth, your monthly expenditure, and any debt that you might have. Based on all the goals and milestones, I mean, all the goals you have set for yourself and the strategies that you employ, right? Have you actually been early in reaching them? Yeah, yeah. I've saved my first 100K when I was 28. Yeah, but was you were planning- I was planning for 30. 20. Oh, so you were two years early. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything in particular that accelerated it for you? Yeah, earning income. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. So mainly that, like, mainly that. Yeah, okay. mainly that. I think yeah. most people's yeah. like first 100K or even $1 million will, yeah. be, tr will be from earning income. Okay. I think at the end of the day, like if you're watching this and you feel like, ah, oh, it's them saying or it's them repetitive, but like, I think that's the point. I think the point is that it is actually quite simple. It's just that there is no get rich quick scheme yeah. out there. And yeah. if you do find one, it might most likely be a scam. Or I mean, there are ways to make a lot of money quickly, but it will involve like considerable risk. Yeah. Like you could be a business owner, then you take most of the profits. Yeah. But then you might also be bankrupt. Mm. So it, it's like a trade-off. How did you even get to that 100K figure? What in initially inspired me was that I saw like a 2013 Straits Times article. Wow. Is it possible to save 100K by, by 30 years old? Uh, then I mean, in my head, I didn't even know much about uh, yeah. personal finance, right? Yeah. Challenge. Then I'll just say, oh, challenge accepted. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna reach it. Because I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos, right? A lot of them are titled like, you know, once you get to your first 100K, then the rest is a lot easier. 10% of 100K is a lot more than 10% of 10K. Ma. But then I think the biggest difference is that in order to get to that 100K, right? You will have made so many lifestyle adjustments, right? And built so many different habits for yourself. That yeah. will, that is the difference maker for your next, yeah. perhaps million. I mean, if you save first 100K, like honestly, like, the next ones will come easier. Number one already, cause like, if you, let's say, let's say you earn it through income, right? You mm. already make like the connections needed. It's not like after you get 100K. That's it. You reset, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Right. You get to compound your skills, your experience, yeah. and your money compounds. Let's say your 100K makes for you like 4K. Then you need to save 96K now. Right, and then you from, uh, let's say 200K, now you, they make you it, they, it makes like 8K for you. Yeah. Then now you need to save 92K. And it goes on and on and on. So that's mm. why the hundred K is the first hundred K is the hardest. You mentioned investment scams, right? Do you have you encountered one before? And like, how do you spot an investment scam? Uh, yeah, like on Telegram, they say join this trading group. Like Mr. Lau will teach you how to trade. <laughs> Mr. Lau got so kind one, right? Mr. Lau, if he was really that good, he would keep all the profits to himself. See, and then Mr. Lau watching now, but he, <laughs> like, he really want to help. <laughs> I don't think so, I don't think so. Like what is actually no happening in the scam? Like is it they are trying to convince you to give them a sum of money and then that is the red flag? No, it's a, usually pump and dump, right? For, for, for those telegram group kind. Yeah. They say everyone buy this stock, then they sell it. Yeah. Oh, you are the exit liquidity, you are the holder, that's what yeah. they say. You become a backholder. There's, there's that, but I think one that I've, I've started to notice also, cause um, some of my relatives like were susceptible to it is that uh, Mr. Lau will say that he, they want to help you, right? Mm. And then at first it all seems great because you use your own brokerage account yep. to trade. And then they say, okay, come, we all go together, go out together and you are making money. Mm. Over time, right? They say, actually, right? For you to get in even earlier, you use our brokerage account. And then that is completely mm. fake and fake pictures. Oh. And especially if you're using Android, for example, it's easier to download apps onto it. Yeah. Um, you don't end up downloading their app. The number that you pump in like the money is obviously just a number that is just Right. Oh, see, so what the scammers are doing, they're working on their earning power, right? They are, <laughs> they, they are leveraging digital tools and technology to scam Singaporeans money remotely. <laughs> After this, the highest search yeah. how to become a scammer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that is what you should be doing as like an employee, right? Uh, the scammers are also yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. They got yeah. the right mindset. Yeah, that's just the yeah. wrong yeah, approach. Bad, bad execution. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's next for you? Like now that you've written a book, right? Sorry, but, let's why did you book? write a book? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I think we wrote a because like we are a personal finance page, right? A lot of our suggestions tend to be what the person can do. 
But we also wanted to acknowledge like there are greater forces around you, like limiting how much you can change your own uh, agency. Yep. What we didn't want was that people to kind of like have the belief that every failure they have is like up to them. Mm. We wanted to provide like a more ho holistic image of like what it means to, tr to thrive in this world. And like, we talk about things that you can control and things that you can't control. Mm. And I think that's what the book does. Okay. So I think the book is what I would have wished existed when I was 25 years old, starting on my journey. So I won't go and like pick all the stocks or I won't be feel, I won't be angry at my boss, like, you know, he earned more than me. How can I earn more than me? So this book's title, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bit long, but yes. I thought it was very interesting. The Woke Salary Man Crash Course on Capitalism and Money, Lessons from the World's Most Expensive City. Actually, I'm caveat lah. Singapore is not the most expensive city. But you have to title expensive a book city. and it needs yeah, to be exactly, catchy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if it's like the world's 13th most expensive <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody will buy it. Right? Yeah. I, so, so, so I want to caveat. We don't live in the world's most expensive city if you know how to spend your money. Ah. Uh, and uh, you can buy it on Amazon and major bookstores. Amazon, popular, Kinokuniya. I think that is the main places you, you probably buy in, in Singapore. So then, I mean, you've written a book, you've started your own company, yeah. and you've worked for many, many years already, right? Mm, ten, 10 years, uh, not that long. And I feel like you are at a place where you are comfortable now also with your finances. Yeah. So what's next for you? I don't know, sleep seven hours a day and uh, <laughs> uh, focus on aging well and doing skincare routine. How far away are you? What, what do you need to happen for you to be able to do that? I'm doing it now, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Coming on a great podcast and talk to my friends. So, uh -huh. Like Dan. Hey, so, never mentioned John. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Because, because I turned my head here. Of course, say you guys too. Yeah. Oh, but before we end, we can't forget about painting, painting of, of the, the episode. episode. So then, please bring us today's painting. And if you don't already know, the Daily Catch Up is a proud partner of Shaping Hearts, which is an all inclusive arts festival showcasing works from local artists with disabilities. So tell us a bit more about today's painting. That's right. So this work is called Rangoon Road Coffee Shop mm. by Daniel Tan Beng Leong. A fellow Daniel. It <laughs> is indeed. And uh, interestingly, Daniel is a tetraplegic mm -hmm. uh, and he painted this with watercolor. Whoa. That is amazing. Yeah, so you can see uh, basically the, the main purpose of why he painted this is that he wanted to capture the bustling ambiance mm. of a once traditional uh, coffee shop on Rangoon Road. Yeah. So if you're looking for amazing, beautiful and meaningful pieces of art such as this, we will see you at Shipping Hearts Festival on the 19th of October at our Tempanese Hub. Don't leave us alone there. See right. you there. Put, Put it back. back. So we've come to the end of today's episode and a big thank you to Ray Ming for joining us, yes. of course. Yeah. If there's one thing I think we hope for you to take away today is to start financial planning as early mm. as you can because then you have that longer runway. And I mean, if you, are, if you feel like you're older, it's not too late, start now. And if you're wondering, where do I start? So I think there are quite a few good free resources online as well, on top of buying Ray Ming's book, of course. <laughs> you can go to this link down here to access the basic financial planning guide by mm. Money Sense or Money Sense also has a ground outreach arm called the Institute for Financial Literacy. So they kind of run talks and workshops on various topics and the public can register for them to go. Right, okay. right. Wow. And on the 2nd of November, Ray Ming and Wei Chun will also be joining a few other people <laughs> at the CPF Ready for Life Festival. So what it is, is you can learn more about financial planning there. There will be panel discussions mm. on investing and a town hall, especially for youths. That's mm. where the work salary wow. man comes in. Mm. So there's more information and signups are available over in the description down below or the links here. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye. Spend within your means. <laughs> <laughs> can we add his book? to the shelf. Yeah. Hey, do you bring a book? No, I now bring it. Sorry. I'm very bad at PR. Yeah. My okay, we buy right? and then we put at the back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Gabi Singh okay. brought the book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that you can't find. Yeah, yeah, you cannot buy it. You cannot buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but he brings it for us. <laughs>